what drew you all to Boy Choir, and especially for the director, working on a tight schedule with children and with music. And I just wondered how you could do this. I mean, it was a short shoot shooting schedule. My previous films were um, uh, much longer shoots. Like I did Red Valley was 65, I think, and I did 55. And I always thought of myself as somebody particularly slow. And I, walking into this, um, I, um, uh, I knew it was to be fast, and uh, I was a little scared. But in the end, I, I felt that, that the... Um, um, going fast at times, also like we're not doing period with like, you know, it was not particularly heavy set, but um, I, and I, in the end, I think there's something on the screen that comes from going fast and not thinking so much. So if you, if you have all the time in the world, sometimes you're overthinking in here, like there was none of that. Uh, and and then I think the the rush of our the way we put stuff. Sometimes it was really crazy. Sometimes uh, uh, there was a, a number of times. I'm really grateful that the actors didn't complain so much because uh, I would have. Um, but the uh, but there's an energy also in like just walking into it and putting it on the screen and rushing uh, sometimes into a take with no rehearsals. Uh, but you know, like sometimes voluntarily, but like I, I, I think there's something of, of that on the screen uh, of, of your marvelous performances, all of you. Well, I think the first time you and I sat down, I really didn't want to get any script notes from you, so I just talked about the music and hoped that that would eat up a couple hours of time, which it did. <laughs> Hope the notes would never come. Um, I grew up near the American Boy Choir School in New Jersey, and that was the inspiration for the choir you see in this movie. And um, I was never a singer, but I was always a classical uh, piano player and was very comfortable with the music. Um, and I don't know that you necessarily need a musical background to, to be in this movie or to create this movie, but you do need a creative background. And so, you know, the more I thought about this movie, it's more about wrestling with how to be creative and how to, how to channel that into something that actually can be realized. Well, I remember the first time I met with Francois, I was like, how am I going to convince him to hire me? That's what I was going in with. And I, I think we discussed Wooly for about five minutes. And then he went on to just talk me through each scene and how the music was going to move through. I was like, yes, whatever. That sounds beautiful. Like, I will absolutely do it. And so we spent an hour and a half bonding over how the music was going to shape the film. And I was like, well, this sounds great. I hope, hope he likes me. The music's going to be great. <laughs> like, I would love to be involved. And I would have to say, in terms of like coming from a musical TV show, when we were filming in New York, and it was a long day because we were doing that big performance at the end, and I walked in, there was like, this feels like glee. It was all the big lights, and I remember talking to Deborah. She's like, this is so different. She's like, it's a whole different setup, and I'm, I come from the world where I'm used to make musical numbers taking an entire day. And like, for me, I'm like, oh, yeah, like I brought a bunch of stuff to read. I was like, I'm going I'm to lay back and relax, where I think some, maybe some of the other people didn't know what to expect. That was the part I felt most comfortable with. The rest of it was all new to me. Well, well the, the truth is that the, these characters are written with words, but as, um, but as well as with music. Uh, um, uh, it's particularly true in the case of Carvel. I think what you're hearing in, in the film, um, the guidelines of that was really the, the music that Carvel would uh, play. Um, and yes, our own personal tastes uh, uh, matter because we push it in a direction, but there's a lot of uh, discussions that we had uh, with Judy Carroll in particular, we, we would talk about the music. It's important uh, uh, to skew it, and you want it to be a wide audience. But there's a moment where you um, you are uh, dictated uh, the, the the nature of uh, Carvel's work. Like uh, like he, he he plays certain music. He is this character. So you write you you, you write the characters with music, but the music tells you uh, what music to put in. And then this uh, it's true for. Uh, many characters and I had no musical background whatsoever and so I had to learn everything in this film at the real American Boy Choir School and it was a whole new world for me and I had no clue what I was doing most of the time but with the help of Francois and everybody it was just it all fell into place you know and it was really really cool being able to be introduced to that new world and the choral music and it was insane everything that happened and what we did so were you Props singing you. most of the time? 
so I did sing on set, yes. And so um, I don't, I'm don't. i not sure which is my voice, but I think some of it is my voice in the film. When Stet is kind of like practicing and stuff, that's me. And then, uh, no, most of it, like at Riverside and all that stuff, that's not me, but it was a very talented singer who, uh, who sang over me. And so they did a great job. It, uh, it's the stuff that you don't see that's behind the scenes, that's really what counts. And so if you did see me, my voice, not matching up with their track and stuff like that, that's the, that takes away from, from the film. And so it's very, it's, it's very intricate what they did and it's very well done. So. A lot of sweating. <laughs> but when I heard that Francois wanted me to be in the film, I said, I'll get him coffee. You know, um, I had certainly seen The Red Violin. It's one of my favorites. And um, so I also wanted to work with Dustin again because Dustin had given me my first speaking role in a movie back in 1976. And I was telling Francois, since Dustin can't be here today, that the last speech he gives the boys uh, is very much like the Dustin that really took me by the hand literally and said, here's the camera you know, and um, one time when we were shooting, he could tell I got very nervous, and he said, can you hear Owen setting up the shot? And I said, no, I can't. He said, well, listen, you know, and I started listening and turning my focus outside myself, and the minute I relaxed, he knew, and he said, that's it. He was so supportive, and he was so helpful, and I think that's underneath the character of Carvel. He, he's so passionate, and Dustin is so passionate about um, his craft. I mean, I've, I've known him ever since then, and, and every time we've crossed paths, he has somehow said something to me about the work and about how, I, I remember seeing him at the Palm Springs Festival a couple years ago, and he was standing off stage, and he said, we were in the dark, and he said, you know, it's about tone. It's about getting exactly the right tone. You know, he's just, he's so passionate about it. And I really wanted to experience working with him again. Given the tight schedule, I always thought Dustin liked to improvise. So was there much improvisation off the script? <laughs> I was the one who'd take most of the blow for that. Um, there was a lot of improv and it was fun because I'm trained in, like to do improv and stuff so I could kind of go along with them and the scene where I say I don't want to be kicked out um, I know what I did was wrong uh, everyone was sitting at the table that was a lot of improv there beforehand to like get the beats and stuff that was that was an awesome time to like, be with everybody and there's a lot of, uh, yeah you bring in the theme of time and time becomes the ultimate adversary it takes your voice it ages you death, et cetera. When did that, was that always in the script? It was always there, and it, it made the whole thing worthwhile to me. It, it completed the character and made it different from any other music story out there because you have this thing that's really not yours, and it inhabits you. And it, it's a great scene that I'm really happy you kept in where Willie uh, talks to Stead about what it really means to sing at that age. So that was, that was always baked into it. That was when I was reading the script. That was my favorite thing because I grew up singing. And when I got to that point in the script, I was like, "Oh, I remember that day, like in my life when I was on stage and couldn't hit the notes anymore." And I was like, "What? Why did nobody warn me about this? Like, what is happening to me?" And I hadn't seen that done before or portrayed in that real way. And so to be on the other side of it, be able to portray that to him was a. Uh, <laughs> it was like it was relief to the, my younger self that never got that. Um, I was fortunate to have a mentor. Uh, I went to school at Southern Methodist when it was becoming a conservatory, and I was lucky to have a mentor in Dr. Hobgood who sat us first-year students down and said, it's going to take you 15 years to do this. Same as if you wanted to be a lawyer or a doctor. It's a craft that you have to build. You have to build an audience. You have to... So it was taken very seriously, and so that's the way I felt for many, many years. And now... It, it is so fast, um, and it's something I regret because, you know, sometimes you hit it and it's wonderful, or then you can get home and you're lying in bed and you go, ah, I missed that moment. There was something else going on there, and 
you, it's, it's, it's sometimes I feel that we are photographing something that's not ready to be photographed yet. But that's just my own curmudgeonly way of looking at the craft. I wrote this script 18 years ago, so it's, it was ready to be photographed. <laughs>